Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton, joined by C.J. Vogel. C.J., uh, we're going to talk a little uh, rapid reaction. Every uh, game we we do, we actually do a rapid reaction. Uh, this is uh, the spring game, so it's a little different because they're playing both offense and, e and defense. It's not just one combined team. But uh, I tell you what, we're going to separate them, though. We're going to do just offense tonight. Uh, we'll come back with uh, defense in the morning. Uh, but really the story of the spring game, there's without with, without a – shadow of a doubt is arch manning and the show he put on uh, earlier today just absolutely outstanding 19 of 25 300 plus yards three touchdowns the interception was a last second hail mary um you know I, I think he came in arch manning came in with all these expectations cj it's fair to say that he exceeded them yet earlier today i really think that that's how good he looked how do you come in as the scion of the Manning family, um, number one player in the country, and exceed expectations in a spring game. That's what he did. You agree with that? Yeah, without a doubt, uh, especially with his start. I mean, to come out, you know, after three series of play and, and, and say, yeah, I'm going to go 11 for 11 to begin and eventually end up with 355 passing yards and three touchdowns. I mean, it was a heck of a day. And I think to me it was – uh, kind of that affirmation or confirmation, sorry, that, yeah, Arch Manning's a talented quarterback, and we finally got to see him behind an offensive line for him to step up in the pocket, for him to have time to go through progressions and certainly put the ball where it needs to be. There were a number of plays uh, that I, I, I remember watching that, you know, because he was able to find time, he was going from read one to read two and finding a completion. Uh, of course, the, there's a big play to uh, Ryan Niblett over the middle of the field where it didn't look like that was the guy he was going to originally find the ball to. Sure enough, as a result of that time, Niblett secures a 20-yard reception right on the right on the money. I thought it was a really impressive showing for Arch Manning. Uh, he looked confident in the pocket. He looked composed. He looked like uh, if Texas needs him to be that guy next year, he will have no issues stepping uh, in and, and doing just fine for the Longhorns. And you mentioned the long ball, not just once, but twice. Once to DeAndre Moore, second time to Isaiah Bond. Right. Um, he he was going to second reads. He was, I mean, he just looked, uh, you know, he looked so comfortable. And I thought he really did a nice job on option routes where uh, a guy could go inside or outside, et cetera. Just all of those things, it, 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 he almost made it look too easy at times, or almost, I, I don't want to say surgeon-like, but it, it certainly felt like he was dissecting uh, the defense, which, uh, you know, I, I've been around, and I've been doing this 30-plus years, and I've been around Texas fo football for that many years, and I'm trying to think of a, a better um, spring game performance from a quarterback, maybe Vince Young, uh, but when he got – Vince Young only had like two or three series, right? I mean right. – in that spring game. And so um, he, I believe Arch had eight drives on the day. Six of them ended in scores. One of them was the last second uh, interception. And the other one was a botched field goal. So he yeah. moved the team. You know, it wasn't just, it, it wasn't a one trick pony by any stretch, right? It was a uh, consistent time after time. Uh, you know, there are going to be a lot of articles written over the next three or four months now because of this. There, there's unquestionably, uh, but we don't have time to talk about it ad nauseum today. I want to move on to Trey Owens. Mm -hmm. which you're talking about pleasant surprises on offense. Absolutely. Trey Owens has to be in that category. Yeah, oh, without a doubt. I, I was just as impressed with Arch. And, and Trey, I mean, together. I thought it was a tremendous day for that quarterback room in general. Uh, Trey, the first touchdown of the day, his ability, and we've talked about this coming out of high school, just kind of that mobility in the pocket and the pocket awareness for him to have come from a high school program that didn't have the best offensive line or protection for him. He's, you know, had to play on the run for most of his high school career, and that's certainly showed today as well uh, for him uh, at Texas in the spring game, uh, that first touchdown to Jaden Blue, where he climbed the pocket, he felt pressure on his front side, he climbed up in the front, and you just delivered a strike. I mean, it was a really impressive throw uh, that was right on the money, right in stride, and allowed the receiver uh, to just, you know, catch it and go. It, there was no uh, adjustment on, on the throw. There was no necessary stuttering on uh, the reception either. It was a perfect throw. And I thought, as the day went on, you understood that, yeah, Trey, he's got some some big boy traits there, you know, like he, he can play ball with, uh, you know, some 
some of these Arch Mannings and Quinn Ewers of the world. Uh, and I, I really liked what Sarkeesian said afterward. He goes, you know what? I understand where he was rated uh, by some of these ranking services, uh, but I think I can evaluate quarterbacks pretty well. And I chose Arch, or I, I chose Trey Owens over anybody in the country, and that there's a reason for that. So uh, all sorts of praise for Trey Owens. It was a tremendous day for him. Uh, I think it's awesome. All right. Uh, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, Allegiant Digital Marketing. Uh, thank you to Chad Markham uh, and his team. Uh, Chad, uh, a tremendous uh, friend uh, of the show. Uh, if you are looking for ways to grow your business, you can save up to $2,500 in advertising by visiting AllegiantDigital.com forward slash on Texas football with Allegiant Digital Marketing today. Uh, did you know that among the top nine challenges business owners face, the most difficult ones include finding customers, increasing brand awareness, digital advertising, and lead generation. What if I could point you to a local homegrown agency here in Austin that could solve those problems for your businesses once and for all? For more than 25 years, Allegiant Digital Marketing founder and CEO Chad Markham, a UT grad and an instructor of the Digital Marketing Boot Camp here at UT Austin, has helped thousands of businesses overcome these challenges. Take advantage of their Hook'em Horn special and save up to $2,500 in advertising. Visit AllegiantDigital.com forward slash on Texas football to learn more today. CJ, the next position, we're going position by here, position here on the rapid reactions for offense running back. Clearly, yep. Jaden Blue's reception was a highlight. Clearly, Cedric Black Baxter running over a couple of guys was a highlight. Um, Trey Wisner, we did not see do much. Uh, Jarrett Gibson and Christian Clark both got a couple carries. Savion Red uh, got in, involved a little bit. But uh, I, safe to say maybe it's still clear that Blue and Baxter are the top two, right? I mean, that that's I, I left today thinking that that was the case for the reasons that we've talked about. Blue is the guy out of the backfield that makes people scared of you a little bit. Baxter's the one that can get the tough yardage, especially in the flat when he's going up against the defensive backs one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I was actually hoping to see a little bit more of uh, Trey Weiser in the passing game, just to see what you can also get from him in that group. We didn't see a lot of 21 personnel. I think that was by design, keeping you know what they've been working on in the spring behind closed doors. Of course, today is just another uh, scrimmage for the most part. But I, I thought there were three plays that really stood out to me from your quote-unquote top three running backs. Of course, you mentioned the touchdown to Jaden Blue. Uh, C.J. Baxter getting loose after the, the check down from Arch Manning where he broke three tackles and ran over Michael Taft. Impressive stuff. I mean, we've talked about the steps that you take going from a freshman that was on the field often to your sophomore year and eventually junior year with a number of guys, Quinn most specifically. But for a guy like C.J. Baxter to have really been able to use this spring ball to understand where he is in his own body at the moment and then use that to his strengths on the football field, that was an impressive run. Broke three tackles right away, ended it with a truck stick and a gain of 11. I think they actually ruled it about a five-yard gain because he stepped out of bounds. But, I mean, that, that was four broken tackles on one play in the matter of 10 yards. It was mighty impressive. And then the other play I wanted to reference was Trey Wisner actually getting the corner uh, on a play that was called back due to a holding call by the outside wide receiver there. He, he showcased that speed, Bobby. We've talked about it. He's, he's got wiggle to him. We know that he's a tremendous worker and a great teammate. I mean, the Texas Longhorns rave about Trey Wisner, but to see him be able to break free just a little bit for that one spurt, another guy where, you know, he was hit two or three times as he was heading out of bounds, maintained balance, stayed on his feet. That will translate down the road. And so those three guys really stood out to me. And, of course, that second offensive line unit still a work in progress. You're not going to see a whole lot of uh, open running lanes for those guys at the moment. Uh, so, unfortunately, we didn't see a lot of – uh, Jarrett Gibson or, or, or Christian Clark. Uh, but, I mean, talented guys. We know that they're uh, good ball players from earlier this spring. Yeah, Clark showed some good hands on a uh, reception on a dump down screen and a little move after the fact. But uh, to your point, they didn't have a lot of uh, free running room overall. Um, all right, wide receivers, we, we've got to go there because I thought, and we had heard, and I want to set this up the right way, um, we had heard that there had been issues with drops, with inconsistent play at wide receiver, and that it was clear that this wide receiver group was not as good as the previous one, which makes sense because you're talking about two first-round draft picks potentially this week, this Thursday, uh, with Adonai Mitchell and uh, Xavier Worthy and even Jordan Whittington, who was at the game earlier today, by the way. 
Um, it makes sense. But what, I, you know, the thing that happened during the course of the game, it felt like they got their legs underneath them. Yeah. Yes, Jonte Cook had a good early first half. He was the only maybe receiver, though, that did. Isaiah Bond clearly struggled. Nobody else seemed to really be uh, found in the passing game in the first half, except for a freshman, Ryan Wingo, who had a tremendous, uh, you know, but he wasn't on the first team. Uh, then you had DeAndre Moore all of a sudden catch a big bomb from uh, Arch Manning. Uh, and it, they, it kind of felt like they got their sea legs as the game went on. Do you, you kind of agree with that? Yeah, definitely. It, it was a shaky start, Bobby. It, it, it was one. Uh, Quinn, I, I wouldn't say necessarily helped himself a whole lot uh, with some of these passes, but they were catchable. And I think it even carried on into the, the second quarter, too. Of course, the throw from Arch right before halftime where you probably would have expected Isaiah Bond to bring that ball down in the end zone. It, it, it felt like there's a little bit of a, a, a jitterbug, a little bit of nerves there. And Sarkeesian mentioned it in his press conference afterward. He's like, yeah, no, I thought it was great for these guys to understand the depth perception inside of DKR with fans. And that might seem like a little bit of a stretch, but it does make a difference. You know, it's you hear about that in basketball all the time. When you play in arenas and you go play in, you know, AT&T Stadium for the the – the tournament. It, it makes a difference when you see people behind where the ball is coming from. So that could have been it. And of course, making an impression in front of a lot of new fans for Isaiah Bond or even a Matthew Golden, who, uh, again, I thought two two guys that you expected to come in to have big days, maybe some nerves there got in the way. But Bobby, I, I mean, I, I was so impressed with the amount of depth at the playmaking position uh, for the wide receivers there. I mean, Ryan Wingo stole the show for me, but to, for Isaiah Bond, DeAndre Moore to have 75-yard touchdowns, Matthew Golden ended up making some nice plays. And Jontae Cook, like you said, the start that he had, that catch that he had on, I believe, is a third and seven from Quinn Ewers there. Manny Muhammad, yeah, yeah. Manny Muhammad, I mean, it, it was very interesting last week. We got to hear Manny talk about how they go against each other in practice, and they like sharing notes about how one beat another or how, uh, you know, you can get reads on what routes are coming. That was a tremendous battle between the two of them. And for Jonte to display those hands and haul that pass in, I think it was a big step for him and, and something for him to, to look back on and say, okay, I, I can do this now. I've I've been able to, uh, you know, walk the walk now. Let me go out and improve it again on the, on the field. Yeah. Wide receivers. I, we talk about that. And then I want to just, it, it goes without saying, I mean, Ryan Wingo, you know, I looked, I was, I was here uh, today with some of my college friends, right? And uh, we were all looking around and I, I told them I really liked Ryan Wingo. I thought he was just a, a potentially a special player at Texas because of his size speed combo. And sometimes, you know, you're right about things and sometimes you're wrong. I felt very right about my call on Ryan Wingo early in the process based on what we saw today. Not only did he run by people, not only did he shake people, he made difficult catches. He made easy catches. He made chain moving catches. He's, he's, you know, and he's, but he's not a finished product. So I don't want to, you can't overhype him, right? Because you know, he, he did not play with the first team at all. He played the third, second, third team. He was with Trey Owens the whole time. At the same time, you could tell Trey Owens when, when uh, he was on the field, uh, there's no doubt that Trey Owens was looking for Ryan Wingo because he felt like, He's the guy that could go make a play against the top defense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, you know, after months of, or sorry, after a month of practice, you should know who's that guy in your room to go make plays at the wide receiving spot. Uh, Wingo, to me, uh, it was more of the, the nuance part of the wide receiving position that I was really impressed with. I was a little bit concerned with his route running ability, his, uh, you know, kind of that separation ability that he would have coming in. Of course, we know the 10-5 speed, his frame, his size, his length. That's all great. But can you do that whenever the competition at the college level is a little bit more up to par with the talent? Today, we certainly saw him be able to take advantage of uh, guys who – didn't have that athleticism. He was able to create separation. The goal line fade wide open. And that's part of uh, one of those question marks for Texas is can these speedsters create separation with their routes? Ryan Wingo did that today. He also was very impressive getting on top of Kobe Black for the 55-yard touchdown reception 
and then stacking him. That's a big part of when you run that fade route and you get be, uh, leverage or get beyond the defense, being able to stack him so if the ball is underthrown, you're able to draw a penalty rather than having the guy run up right beside you and make a play on the ball. Really impressive stuff. Yeah, the, just a, the world of opportunity ahead of him. I think, and I, I mentioned this to, to Rod in the post game. I think that Sark has got a guy in, in Ryan Wingo that is so talented, he's going to have to force him into the lineup at times. He's that talented of guy. Uh, should be interesting, even with uh, the guys that they brought in uh, through the transfer portal. Uh, all right, uh, before we go to uh, – let's not go – before we go to tight end, let's just go to tight end. Um, <laughs> look, uh, Gunnar Helmley knew was the, the number one tight end coming in. Juan Davis – it's kind of that H back type tight end that they like to flex out a little bit. Uh, but I want to talk about two guys more. And that's Amari My- Nyblack, who in the first half, I mean, CJ, you sent me a text. Hey, have we seen much of Nyblack? And we hadn't. Um, and then all of a sudden he starts popping up a little bit. You know what I mean? He starts catching the ball, making some guys miss a little bit. Uh, being a big target in, in nice situations, particularly for Arch Manning. And then also Jordan Washington. I mean, goodness yeah. gracious. I mean, um, we talked about this. We think he's a future NFL guy after the first practice we saw him. And like, look, that's what tight ends are supposed to look like at that age, right? Um, it, you know, talk about those two uh, because I think they're in a little bit different situation. I think Washington is big enough, CJ, where he actually might be able to be an inline guy and a flex guy. Whereas I think Nyblack is almost, I mean, he looks like a flex guy. That's, yeah, that's kind of his game almost for sure. Um, and so I just think that that the Longhorns added two tight ends that are possible NFL guys in this offseason. Yeah, and they certainly, like you said, they have their own strengths and characteristics that will play into a role this fall. Uh, for Nyblack specifically, I mentioned, I mean, it, it didn't feel like we saw a lot of them, and whether or not that was by design or whatever, uh, yep. it, he certainly turned it on in the second half. And I think, like Isaiah Bond, who we saw the first two plays of the second half go to him, Yeah, I, I think it was more of an – uh, a strategic approach to get them involved, to see what they can do, allow them to showcase their abilities in front of the Texas fans. Uh, Nye Black, again, we didn't see a whole lot of it, but that little spurt of him with the, the ball in his hands, you see the juice. He didn't get loose all that much, uh, but he certainly showed that promise of what he can do with the ball and, and, and the after the catch ability. Uh, but, man, that catch Jordan Washington made – Going no. up when he flipped over. That's that basketball background. Going up for the bat, uh, for a rebound and coming down with the strong hands, but also that ability, Bobby, that you mentioned to stay in line and have that physicality. Of course, looking back on some of the tape, you're, you're going to see room for them to improve on the line. But right now, Jordan Washington certainly looks like a guy that you'll be able to have uh, in line, outside, you know, in the slot. He, he's a, an all around tight end, or at least one in the making, in my eyes. He also had a, a nice little uh, tight end screen, uh, inside yeah. screen uh, as well. So Jordan Washington going to be a, a factor long term uh, for Texas. Hopefully he's completely healthy uh, falling. I, it looked like an ankle injury uh, on uh, Saturday. We'll do some more checking on that. All right. Uh, before we go to the offensive line, uh, our last position on offense, I want to say one final thank you to our friends at Ali- Allegiant Digital Marketing. Are you a business owner who struggles with any of the following? Finding new customers, consistent leads, finding marketing services to promote your business that actually work. Uh, Founder and CEO, Chad Markham with Allegiant Digital Marketing, an Austin-based advertising agency, has helped thousands of business owners just like you for more than 25 years conquer these same challenges. So if you are ready to start making money in your business and grow with confidence, visit AllegiantDigital.com forward slash on Texas football and get a free marketing plan. Plus, you can save up to $2,500 $2,500 in advertising with their Hook'em Horns special today. Uh, that's Chad Markham with AllegiantDigital.com. Make sure you use on forward slash on Texas football to get that free marketing plan for your business. All right, uh, CJ, let's talk offensive line. Uh, uh, interesting grouping. Um, they moved, uh, of all of them, they moved Neto Umiozulu. He played a lot of right guard mm-hmm. instead of left guard today. Um, Cole Hudson played left guard. Then you had Hayden Connor work in at center, but I felt like Connor Robertson actually made looked better at center than Hayden Connor. Um, Daniel Cruz looked good at times at center. Brandon Baker got some time. Um, if anything, I thought maybe Andre Kojo really had a, a major issue dealing with the, 
some pass rush. So did Cam Williams, by the way. Cam Williams didn't look great in pass protection. Uh, but at, that was the first half. The second half, they kind of got, again, I don't want to say sea legs, but, man, it was an offensive explosion in the second half. And part of that was their ability to protect the passer. Right. Uh, and they did really, really well, I thought, overall. Maybe the inside run game wasn't as good as expected, but you got to remember Jake Majors only played two two series, I think. Um, and so they were moving around the offensive line uh, quite a bit. What, what was your takeaway? Any major takeaways for you on the OL? Yeah, I think with the running game, you know, you didn't see the big holes that you might have expected or at least saw a bit a year ago with that same core. But to your point, Jake Majors, not a guy that we saw play extended snaps today. Uh, that was the expectation coming in. And certainly when you miss that centerpiece, uh, it, it certainly throws off what else happens in terms of specifically in the recognition of the front in front of you, which is one of the biggest pieces of the entire offense. Jake Majors does a tremendous job of being the leader, that vocal piece right there, diagnosing fronts and stuff. Uh, but yeah, to me, I, I was pleased with the pocket. I was pleased. Uh, you know, the second team unit allowed a couple sacks. I know Colton Vosick had one. Uh, they allowed a corner sack. Cecilia Kana actually got into the backfield as well. So that's still a bit of an issue. But I think Texas right now feels comfortable with their top seven when you add in a Cole Hudson, you add in a Nato Umiozulu. And the versatility of a guy like Hayden Connor also allows depth at the right tackle position. Right now, I'm not sure I'm completely sold on who that third tackle prospect is. I saw issues for Jaden Chapman, Andre Kojo, Brandon Baker, still very new to the college level. So it's a learning curve there. And of course, one that Texas is going to need to find uh, a true solution at for the fall, whether it be a Hayden Connor or it be uh, one of those three names I just mentioned. Or, 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 Trevor, or Trevor Gooseby. I mean, Trevor Absolutely, Gooseby. Yes. He's the one that gave up the pressure by Akana. Um, and so to your point, I think that, uh, you know, they're they're young. Yeah. They are young at backup tackle right now because Gooseby and Kojo both have one year in the program. Brandon Baker's brand new and Hayden Connors never p played the position before. Right. How they might play that would be very interesting to me if someone like Cam Williams went down or, for example, if uh, Kelvin Banks or uh, there's another. I mean, uh, tackle it tackle is really good, I think, in the upper class ranks, but the, the lower class ranks. They may not be there yet to where they need to be. Thankfully, they got four more months uh, yeah. now to get in the weight room, get some more work in, understand it more. And this was good for them. Uh, this is the first time they really saw major action. If you really want to get down to it, because uh, last year in the spring game, these guys weren't playing that much. Right. Uh, they just weren't. Um, and because they were third team. Now they moved up to second team. So uh, it, it happens all the time. We see this, uh, but it's, it's good. And it's important to also realize uh, that they were also going up against the ones quite a bit. Uh, and so uh, so there's a little uh, give and take there. All right, that, CJ, that's going to do it for this offensive uh, uh, rapid reactions thing. Uh, before I, I finish, though, is there anything anything that you brought and just circled coming out of today outside of the quarterbacks? I mean, is there anything that you just think feel like people need to know and and hear about what you're thinking right now? I, I think you're – listen, I, I I know Texas had Xavier Worthy for three years, and he was that go-to guy. And I know in a Sarkeesian offense you have that guy. I don't know who that guy is right now, and I don't know if that's an issue because I think Texas is going to be very deep with the weapons that they deploy in a given personnel, whether that be the wide receivers, a tight end or two, or the running backs. I feel like it, it's almost a wealth of talent to the point where it doesn't matter. If there's the guy, I know you'd like to have him. Right now, I'm not sure who that's going to be. You'd like it to be Isaiah Bond because, of course, what he came in with. Uh, but, man, Ryan Wingo made a lot of noise today. And, I mean, we've talked about it. The running back group is, is very talented as well. That's going to be really interesting to see, especially the four, first four weeks of the season when you really start identifying uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the Texas team before the SEC conference play comes in. Yep. Who's the number one receiver may be the biggest question the rest of the summer. It yeah. really may be. I mean, and it's up for grabs based on what we saw today. Isaiah Bond showed some long speed. Jonte Cook probably was the best all around of the of the um, of the guys from a start to finish game perspective. He didn't have an up and down game at all. DeAndre Moore had the big catch. Uh, it's interesting. Who's number one? Uh, I, I don't know. 
it's it's a really good call. All right, uh, thanks again to Allegiant Digital Marketing. Uh, remember forward slash on Texas football for twenty five hundred dollar free plan uh, from them uh, for your business if you're interested. Uh, for CJ Vogel, I'm Bobby Burton. Uh, I'm tired. It's been a long day today, uh, <laughs> but we'll go come back again tomorrow morning uh, with a defensive update. CJ, thanks for joining me for this rapid reactions on Texas football. Welcome everybody. <laughs>